Hi everyone, good evening and welcome to our interview with Cobalt Smart Home. And today, what we're going to talk about is whether a smart home is only for lazy people. So today, I'm very honoured to have with me Eric, the co-founder of Cobalt. Uh, he majored in Information Systems at SMU, founded COBOL back in 2016 based on a simple idea to make life better. So his inspiration came from when he was serving national service, when he was an NSF. After long hours of training, he wanted to switch off the bunk lights without having to get out of his bed. Uh, now, we are here a registered BCA contractor, been building automation, industrial and process control systems. So I'd like to welcome Eric. And to start us off, I'm just going to start with the topic itself. Eric, do you think a smart home is only for lazy people? Hey, hi, hi, Jamie. Thank you for having me on this Facebook Live. Okay, hold on, huh? let me... Right, so... so uh... From our perspective, we believe that smart home is for efficient people. In fact, the myth of a, a smart home for lazy people is totally wrong. Um, it's like how we had our communication evolution, you know, things always improve. People used to carve uh, the text, the story on stones, and then eventually we moved to uh, text on paper. And then you know, we had phone line, we had one-to-one -one conversations through phones, and then eventually we have smartphones. We start to have mass communication, uh, over over uh, smartphones, right? So uh, things evolve and, and people become more efficient. So uh, if we look at this transformation uh, in how humans interact with the home, uh, there is some form of evolution too. So in the past, people used to use oil lamps. You know, you have to go through the entire hassle of lighting up the oil lamp and then so, that, so that your entire house is well lit. And then eventually when we have uh, alternating current, you know, we have electricity, then we have switches. So as, as uh, time passes, we have, uh, at this point in time, we have smart switches or, or smart lights. So when we have these things, we are able to use voice control to control these lights, fans, or any electrical equipment. So other than voice control, we can also use app to control. So in a way, it becomes uh, a lot more convenient uh, on how a user can interact with uh, their entire house. You no, know, I don't have to walk all the way to my switch just to turn it off, you know, if I'm seated right here. Yeah, so uh, at the end of the day, what we want to emphasize is these three, can three key benefits of a smart home. First is comfort, second is convenience, and third is security. So when we look at uh, comfort, you know, you want uh, to have an uh, elevated uh, form of uh, uh, living experience in your own house. So just imagine in the past, when you wake up, Sorry, uh, before you sleep, you have to set alarm at 7 a.m. And then the next morning, you have to, uh, you have to listen to a blaring alarm at 7 a.m. just to wake up. So with a smart home, things can be really, really very different. So in a way, you can, at, you can preset at 7 a.m. every day. Curtains open slowly so that you, know, you have that one glow of sunlight uh, being let into your room. And then air conditioner turns off. And then your, your fan turns on. So in a way, your body warms up and then uh, you get really, really very comfortable when you, uh, when you wake up. So uh, that's uh, one of the key benefits that we have when we talk about smart home, that comfort. Okay, the next one will be convenience. So uh, in the past, when we want to, when, when we, before we leave the house, we always need to check whether this uh, electronic is turned off, whether that light is turned off, whether that AC is turned off. Uh, but with the smart home, everything integrated, you know, all you just need to do is, uh, with a tap of a button, leave, everything will be turned off for you. So uh, that form of convenience uh, really improves a homeowner's life significantly, right? Okay, and then uh, the last point that we have is security. So in security, your entire house, uh, the level of security is built up when you, utilizes, when you utilize motion sensors or contact sensors. So if there is any anomalous activity being detected at home, you will receive a notification. Or let's say if you use a, a smart door lock with us, you will know when your kid is back home. Right? So these are the, the, the types of security 
uh, features that you can get or fe uh, security benefits that you can get when you have a comprehensive smartphone setup. Oh, thanks, Eric. Thanks for uh, having uh, uh, being with us today and thank you for sharing about uh, benefits of a smart home. I actually like the mm. one on comfort quite a bit. The one, you know, it really enhances the morning routine. Yeah, right? yeah it does. It does, yes. Slowly wake up and, and all that, you know, rather than having a jarring alarm uh, um, blast at you. So I think, I don't mm -hmm. know, it leads into well-being as well. So that's... Uh, that's that's really exciting for me, and uh, so the next question I wanted to ask that I heard that um, you can actually save electricity. Uh, mm -hmm. with a smart home, there's actually a way that you can set it up to actually save electricity. Is that true? Okay, so so it really depends. You know, is uh, I won't say it's a hundred percent. It really depends. So when you have a very simple setup, you don't really save. A lot of electricity, right? But uh, if you have a elaborate setup, then it is quite possible, right? So, so when we are talking about simple setup, uh, we are talking about uh, changing your switches to a smart switch, or perhaps um, yeah. So, so a simple setup will be using simple smart switches and uh, motion sensors, right? Uh, and elaborate setup, we are talking about. Uh, smart switches, smart air conditioner controller, smart blinds, smart curtains. So uh, the reason why I say for a simple setup, you don't really save a lot of electricity is because uh, for a light, so let's say for an LED light, uh, a 24, 24 watts LED light, if you turn on that light for the entire day, right, uh, it costs about 11, 11 cents based on uh, Singapore's uh, uh, energy consumption, uh, uh, energy, uh, energy charge at this point in time, which is 24.63 cents per kilowatt. So if you turn on the lights the entire day, it's only going to cost 11 cents, right? And then with the motion sensor, uh, when no, no motion is detected, it turns the, the lights off. Uh, it will be a slight amount of uh, savings. So when you have a very simple setup, we don't really, really have a significant amount of uh, energy savings. So if there is any smart home vendors out there that, can, that tells you, you know, if you can save a lot of electricity when uh, you use a smart home, I think you should turn around and run away because that's not really the case, right? But if you have a very elaborate setup, when you include your motorized curtains and motorized blinds, then that's when we might be able to see significant amount of savings. Why? So, uh, if you use Kobo smart home system, okay, we have a temperature and humidity sensor, uh, a wireless temperature and humidity sensor. So, it will be able to detect the temperature of your house, right? So, let's say uh, you have a west-facing window and, and when the area uh, reaches, let's say, 20, 29 degrees, right? Your motorized curtains will automatically close. So, when that happens, the, the temperature of your house uh, is lower, right? And then when you reach back home and when you turn on the air conditioner, you don't have to set such a low temperature just to cool the area down, right? And then uh, and when we have the air conditioner, when, so, so for instance, in the past, without a smartphone, you will uh, set your air conditioner at 18 degrees when you're back home. But with a smart home, you'll set it at 27 degrees. So uh, between 27 degrees and 18 degrees, we actually have a 30% uh, energy consumption, 20% uh, savings in uh, energy consumption. So that's where we are able to see slightly more uh, energy savings. So yeah, so at the end of the day, it really depends. You know, simple setup, not, not really much. You don't really have a lot of savings, but uh, elaborate one, maybe you have slightly more. Okay, so it makes sense for people with an elaborate setup, with especially if they're going to use a lot of aircon, if they have high ceilings with those full high glass yeah, or glass yeah. houses that all right, all right. have a lot of thermal in, uh, insulation and smart yes, home. Yes. So that yeah, so in that case, it really makes a lot more sense to have a comprehensive smart home setup. Hmm. Okay. So you mentioned that um, mm. there's a uh, there's uh, smart switches, right? But I know a lot of people actually nowadays they, they hear of smart uh, lighting. So, you know, they just buy a smart bulb. 
Um, so what's the difference actually? Why, um, you know, both of them, they can control the lights. Uh, so why would someone mm -hmm. use a smart uh, switch versus a smart light? Okay, yeah, I, I think that's a very good question. So uh, in the market, there is uh, smart lights and we also have uh, smart switches. Okay, so for uh, easy comparison, uh, well, let's, let's pull in smart switches with neutral and smart, smart switches without neutral too, because I believe that's a, a burning question most of our audience will have. So I'll bring in these three categories for comparison. Okay, smart switch without neutral, smart switch with neutral, and smart lights with manual switch. Okay, and uh, so let's say for uh, a three bedder and one living room, all right, uh, the average amount of switches that we have in that house is around seven switches. Okay, and that seven switches controls about 17 bulbs. So for a smart switch, the average uh, price in, uh, the, for a smart switch, the average price in the market is about $100 per piece. So if we go for a smart switch without neutral, that will cost about $700, right? Because seven switches. Uh, and if you are talking about a smart switch with neutral wire, right? That will be about $980, including all the rewiring, right? But if we choose to go with the option of smart lights and use manual switch, that will cost about $1,005 based on uh, average cost of $89 per smart bulb. So, so when we look at this, when we look from a cost perspective, it becomes a lot more expensive if we opt for a smart light, right? If you have smart switch, you have more savings, okay? And then when uh, some, some uh, homeowners also ask whether they are still able to use a physical switch to control the lights, okay? So for all cases, yes, right? You can turn on and off the lights. However, if you use smart lights, right, you, you still can uh, turn off manually. But after you turn off the switch manually, you are no longer able to voice control or use the app to control the smart lights. Right? Whereas for smart switches, you are still able to control uh, your, your, your lights from the app, even though on the physical switch itself, it's turned off. Right, so, so there are benefits for using a smart switch, okay? Then, can you control light and fan for all cases? Yes, right? Can I use one of the buttons for quick control? So for smart switches, you can do that. So in our case, uh, for instance, when we talk about a uh, three button switch, right? Three button smart switch. One button can be for the fan, one button can be, uh, will be for the lights, and one button will be a quick leave, uh, SIM control. So when the users press that button, it will turn off everything in the house, right? So it can be, it can function as a quick control button, right? Uh, and can I still, okay, so, so this is also another question that we get uh, from homeowners. So if I get a smart switch, can yeah. I, is there a specific kind of lights that I must use? The answer is no, okay? You can practically use any lights if you use a smart switch. Okay, but if you use smart lights, you can you you must you must use smart smart lights. You must use that particular brand, Philips Hue or uh, Xiaomi B lights, etc., etc. Ah, I yeah. see. Yeah, because I I I was uh, over in Australia and then they were selling these uh, Wi-Fi smart lights very cheaply. So yeah, I do have the problem. You know, once mm. normally it's much faster when you're walking past to just use the switch to turn on and turn off. But once it's, yes. uh, yeah, you know, I, I actually have to, I have to use everything for my phone and, you know, sometimes Siri is a bit slower. Mm -hmm. So, so I do, I do find the pain mm -hmm. in that, uh, you know, without a switch to actually control, I can have to control through right, my right. phone. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. but I guess, I think the other question that I, I, I would have, uh, uh, um, okay, so, um, so I think some people would ask why, why go for rewiring with neutral? if you can do it without neutral. Because I know without neutral would be very great for those people who are already staying inside yeah. and they want to switch to smart home and they don't have yeah. to do anything. You can just change out the existing switch and just put it in and you can actually have a, you have the smart switch there, which is great mm -hmm. for people who are not doing renovation. But um, yeah. yeah, is there a reason why 
yeah, why would someone want to go with neutral? Okay, so uh, in so if you opt for a smart switch with neutral, the entire performance will be more stable, mm. right? Because uh, in in most houses there is no neutral wire at the switch point, right? Yes. So so how it works, you just have to imagine um, you have your distribution board and then it supplies live power to a switch, right? And then the switch will have a live output to the light, right? And then the light will have a neutral wire back to the distribution board. So yeah. that's how, how it works. So when you turn it on, there is power that runs through the switch. When you turn it off, there's no power, right? Yeah. So you, if you opt for a smart switch without neutral, okay, that, that means you take out the manual switch and then you replace it with a smart switch, uh, it will still work. However, there might be some issues uh, with the longevity of the light because uh, there is actually power that still runs through a no neutral switch so that this switch will receive a command anytime uh, you want it to uh, turn on or turn off, right? So at uh, any point in time, without a neutral, there will still be power that's running through the switch into the driver, right? But, but so it depends on, on the light's driver. If it's able to handle the load, then yes, it's, it's good, right? So uh, usually we advocate for uh, customers to use a smart switch with neutral. Mm. Why? So if you are able to pull the neutral wire down, uh, it will not uh, send any load to the light. So, there, so your light will still work as per usual. The, the lifespan will still be as long. Ah, yeah, so so that are some that is some of the consideration. That is one of the consideration when we talk about uh, neutral and no neutral. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. So uh, I guess there is a uh, there's a uh, it makes sense to spend that extra bit of money to to do this wiring. All right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Right. So, um, you, you, I mean, I know that your system is actually based on Zigbee, right? And I also heard there's a lot of online mm. shops that are actually using Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi switches, uh, Wi-Fi smart home uh, systems. So what, what exactly mm -hmm. is Zigbee? Yeah. And, uh, you know, how different is it from Wi-Fi? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, so uh, other than Zigbee and Wi-Fi, let's bring in uh, another frequency that's mm. uh, frequently mentioned which is Z-Wave. Mm. Okay, so the, the common ones that we have will be Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Z-Wave. Of course, we also have uh, the, the other emerging ones such as Bluetooth, etc, uh, etc. Et okay, but these are the pioneers in the market. So uh, when we talk about Wi-Fi wi -Fi switch, uh, they are really, really very cheap. Okay, it costs mm only about $30, $30 plus to get expensive, $100. Z-Wave is uh, the most expensive, $130. Okay, so there is a reasoning behind uh, this, there's a reason behind all these price points. So for Wi-Fi switch, uh, it is very easy for any man manufacturer to uh, create that particular Wi-Fi chip because it's not really controlled, right? So they are able to produce it at a lower price point. Okay, for Zigbee switch, it's managed by by the Zigbee Alliance. So the Zigbee Alliance have uh, a few uh, Zigbee chip manufacturers. Okay, so it is slightly more competitive. Whereas for Z-Wave Switch, for Z-Wave Frequency is managed by the Z-Wave Alliance and there is only one manufacturer that produces this Z-Wave chip. So they have a lot of bargaining power and it becomes a lot more expensive uh, when you purchase, purchase a Z-Wave Switch. Yeah. So other than the switch cost itself, uh, we want to also look at the energy consumption per switch, right? Because some owners might ask, hey, if I change to a smart switch, uh, is it gonna is it is it gonna jack up my electricity bill? Mm. So not really. It uh it won't be the case if you use Zigbee switch or Z Wave switch. But if you use Wi-Fi switch, then good luck to you. You can really see a spike in your energy consumption. I see. Uh, Maybe not very significant, but you will see a spike. Why? Because uh, Wi-Fi switch, they are not designed to be energy efficient. So here are some numbers uh, that you can look at. Uh, to sustain a, a Wi-Fi switch, okay, to be on standby mode, it costs about 16 cents per month. 
right? So uh, whereas for Zigbee and Z-Wave switch, it costs only one cent to sustain a switch per month, right? So, so there is a very big difference. And we can also see this difference uh, when we talk about a, Z a Zigbee motion sensor. Okay, a Zigbee motion sensor with a coin button is able to last 1.5 to 2 years. So wow. the amount of data transfer is very low. It is very energy efficient. Yeah, so when you want to go for a slightly more comprehensive smartphone setup, we really recommend using uh, Zigbee or Z-Wave frequency as compared to Wi-Fi. Okay? Yep. It, nice. Yeah. So, so uh, but however, some uh, customers also have questions regarding um, Zigbee versus Z-Wave. Mm, yes. Like, why should I use Z-Wave and why should I use Zigbee? Okay, yep. so uh, both have its pros and cons. Uh, but let me address one misconception. Uh, many people believe that uh, as long as you get a Z-Wave device, all of them will work together. Okay, that's not the case, right? Why? Because uh, Singapore uses its own Z-Wave frequency. Europe uses its own Z-Wave frequency. Uh, China has its own Z-Wave frequency and USA has its own Z-Wave frequency. So if you buy a Z-Wave product from USA, it will not work with the Z-Wave product from Europe. Okay? Uh, so this is a very uh, common misconception when uh, you know, people assume I buy a Z-Wave product, it will all work together. No, that's not the case. Okay? And the only countries that have the same Z-Wave uh, frequency as Singapore are um, Macau, South Korea, Taiwan, and Thailand. Right. Oh, and Taiwan, yeah, so, and, and only Taiwan and Thailand manufacture all these uh, Z-Wave products in this particular frequency. China don't even manufacture Singapore's frequency, right? So, so you can imagine uh, how expensive it is to have a Z-Wave product in Singapore when only uh, two countries manufacture uh, this device in this particular uh, frequency. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess it will be limited also, the types yes, of yes, products, yes, yes. right? Yeah. Correct, correct. It's limited. Okay, maybe, maybe let me talk about uh, this point too, about, uh, about Wi-Fi switch and Zigbee and Z-Wave switch. Yeah. So, uh, for Wi-Fi products, right, uh, everyone knows that it needs to be connected to the router directly. Yeah. Right, so if you have a Wi-Fi switch that's very far away from your router, it's going to be a problem. Okay, there's going to be connectivity issues. You might not be able to control it. Or let's say if you have a Wi-Fi curtain motor that is at the far end of your house, right? Uh, sometimes you might have connectivity issues uh, uh, trying to control that particular curtain or blind. Mm. So it becomes a big problem. And then we, we, also, we might also have latency issues when you have so many Wi-Fi products being connected to the router at the same time. Okay, whereas for Zigbee and Z-Wave, uh, at any point in time, there is only one point of contact with a router, and that is the smart hub. Okay. okay. And this smart hub has a mesh, this Zigbee uh, protocol has a mesh network. So, uh, you just imagine, this. if you want to communicate with this Zigbee switch, what it can do is, this hub will speak to this switch here, and you will relay the message to this switch, and subsequently to this last switch. So we call it a mesh network. So when you have a landed house, okay, you are you. It's really advisable to use this uh, Zigbee or Z-Wave network because uh, you have uh, uh, this relay system. So the biggest we have uh, ever implemented was on a four-story uh, house. So from level one all the way to level four, there is no connectivity issues. Yeah. Oh. So so. So when you have a bigger house, I think this uh, problem will become more significant and it's really more advisable to look for a, a particular protocol that can support uh, your entire use. Yeah, correct. Because uh, we, when we do our landed property, this, this is what they always ask us about. Yeah, whether yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's able to control everything from the bottom mm -hmm. floor, the basement, all the way to the attic. Yeah, and you know, they, they always want to be able to make sure everything is switched off. You don't want to walk yeah. three, four flights of stairs just to switch on yeah. your aircon upstairs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's a pain point. <laughs> okay. 
thanks for sharing about Wi-Fi and Zigbee. Yeah. You're and um, so, okay, so you've been doing smart home for quite some time, right? I'm sure you have mm. all the secrets about what's the coolest, most awesome smart home features. Um, what right. would you pick? Mm. What's your favorite? Uh, what's my favorite? So I, I, I have a few favorites. Uh, okay. but I think I think one of the one one that I really like would be the, the initial example I shared with you earlier on, uh, with the morning wake up scene. So uh you know in the past I have alarm, so it's really very noisy. So with the new changes, you know, at seven AM I have soothing music start playing, and uh, curtains will open, uh air conditioner will be turned off. So at 7 a.m., my body really gets warm up instead of get, getting a huge shock. Yeah, so I think that's a really very, very comforting experience. Uh, for other use cases, uh, that would be Google Home. So uh, it's an interesting feature. So actually, Google, if you have multiple Google Home at home, they actually uh, become uh, relay speakers. So if you have, let's say, a, a Google Home in kitchen and you know, it's dinner time, the mom will say, hey, uh, it's dinner time. And if it's, a, let's say, a four-level per house, right, all the Google Home in other levels will start playing, hey, it's, good, uh, it's dinner time. So the mom no longer have to uh, run up you know, four different levels just to tell everyone it's dinner time. Yeah, oh, it will wow. be related to, to the Google Home speakers. That's actually a very interesting uh, uh, Google Home feature. So you don't even need... No, of course, of course there are a lot yeah. more other features that we have. Yeah. yeah so, which means you don't even need an intercom. Because you know a lot, uh, especially for leather yeah, property, yeah. usually you have an intercom right. uh, everywhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yes, you can have yes, uh, yes. Google Home Mini around oh, that's every room. Cool. Yeah. So, so you don't even need to run the intercom wires anymore. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's... Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, intercom wires are quite a pain and not cheap to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but from the installation side of things. Okay, that's cool. So, um, okay, mm. so back to more serious topics. So, yeah, you, you were mentioning we have, uh, so you have the Zigbee speakers and then we have these smart devices. And nowadays, a lot of people actually buy smart home automation stuff online. Um, is it recommended or, or should they not actually be purchasing it online? Uh, okay, so um, from our experiences with uh, homeowners, when they purchase things online, uh, the most common issue that we have is um, things don't work well. Hmm. Uh, or they may need different apps uh, to, to make sure that they are able to control individual devices. So it becomes a hassle, right? So uh, when, when we are looking at this entire smart home transformation, uh, we want it to be as painless as possible, right? So that's when we really advocate uh, having a smart home specialist to provide advice. Okay, so uh, other than that, we also provide a uh, very comprehensive uh, proposals for homeowners. So let's say if you need, uh, you know, you tell us you have a five five bed, sorry, a five room apartment. You have elderly, you have uh, children, you have uh, the parents that are staying in here. We are able to provide you with a, a proposal that is able to cater to cater for everyone's needs. So, for instance, in the living room, uh, it's a common space where everyone gather for maybe a show, you know, that's when we can propose a, a, a scene, a, 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 a setup where you are able to activate a movie scene. So for instance, uh, lights will be dim, curtains will be closed, television will be turned on, air conditioner set to a particular temperature. So all these things, uh, it, can, uh, it can be done when you have a specialist that's able to advise you, right? And other than that, Okay, maybe we can take a look at, let's say, an uh, elderly room or maybe for a uh, bathroom. So let's say if you tell us that there is an elderly, there is an elderly that's staying uh, with everyone in the house, then uh, safety becomes a bigger priority for us. So we will recommend having uh, panic buttons installed in bedroom, in the elderly's uh, bedroom, right? So if there is any issues, the elderly just need to 
press the panic button and everyone in the house will receive a notification. Okay, so that is uh, a very important safety feature uh, when, we, when we have uh, elderly in mind. Okay, or uh, let's say for convenience, for convenience purpose, we will install, a, we'll propose a quick control button that's placed beside the bed for elderly. Right, so before the elderly want to sleep, uh, you know, in the past, they will turn off the lights and then they will fumble, fumble to the bed. Right? Yeah. So with a quick control button uh, that can activate a sleep scene, okay, the lights can be turned on, the elderly just need to go to the bed, tuck in nicely, and then when they press the button, the lights will be turned off, curtains will close, then the, 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 the room will be uh, dark. Right, yeah, so, so that's a, that becomes a, a, a huge uh, safety aspect. Uh, that uh, smart home specialists will take into consideration when there is elderly at home. Yeah, so these are uh, just some of the examples we have when you engage a smart home specialist as compared to uh, getting things DIY out in the market. But of course, let's say, let's say if you want to uh, try out smart home, right, you are not ready to commit a huge amount and you just want to try out for fun, then of course it's okay. It's okay to get you know, a few likes here and there to try out. And have fun okay but the impact really comes when you have a very comprehensive smart home setup right mm. when you press leave everything turns off for you and so that's when you really can see the impact it becomes very visual it becomes very exciting yeah, so so these are just some of the the reasons why uh, we really advise people to to look for a smart home consultant i see because it's like yeah it's very it's diy and then uh, with whatever use cases that you're familiar with and then versus uh, done for you, right? So uh, even the yes, whole setup, yes. uh, the home, home automation specialist can help with the whole setup, which I know can be, can take quite a lot of time and can be quite a pain. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah correct, my correct. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> it's also a pain for interior designers because uh, homeowners, uh, some of them, they will purchase the wrong kind of switch because they are not familiar. So they will purchase the USA smart switch. I see. Right? And then we know that USA smart switch is different from our Singapore square, 86 by 86. In USA, that's the rectangular one, right? Yeah. And yeah. then when the homeowners purchase all these smart switch, and then they ask the, the interior designers to install for them, and then the, install, installer design, the, the designers will get a shock of their life because they are not <laughs> expecting a rectangular switch. Yeah, then at the end of the day, so many changes need to be done. And then uh, yeah. all these costs will be borne by the homeowners. So it becomes uh, another set of problems. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know, yeah, I mean, uh, there's, there's the installation and all that. And also, uh, I had a homeowner, they were yeah. setting up all the smart lighting on their own uh, for a landed property that yeah. had quite a few levels. And yes. a few months later, they were still telling me, I haven't set up. <laughs> I haven't set it up. <laughs> and they like, haven't connected and set up and do all the proper yeah, right. scenes and everything. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, I handed over and they moved in for quite a few months. And they said, yeah, it's been a pain. Uh, they're slowly going to get the sun to set up. Slowly, slowly set up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of uh, time, uh, yeah, really to, to DIY. Yes. Uh, especially yes. if you That's buy right. online, there's no support. There's, yeah. Mm. And that's true, there's no support. So the only, the only person they know uh, who to speak to is basically is me, but uh, we are not smart home specialists. We are interior designers. So there's only so much right. we can talk with. Yeah, yeah, if we have to refer to the mm, expert. Mm, yes, department. yes. Yeah, then that's that, can a, that can be a quite a big concern. Correct, correct. I think, uh, and then uh, yes, the, yeah. so we checked with mm. Some, someone who was willing to do uh, so-called uh, help some the, the setup, I think it, it was about $500 or so la, just for the setup fee. La. Yeah. So, 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 mm. so okay. It's, okay. It's not, yeah, it's not free. No one's going to come down and do it for you for free. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thanks so much for sharing. But it's worth it it's yeah. worth it to get this, uh, this advice. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, for us, definitely for we, as interior designers, we always refer to the experts rather than you know uh, mm. getting it all wrong and, and, and things can't communicate and then uh, support. So, you know, um, I heard yeah. a lot of uh, homeowners, especially when they just bought some stuff online, uh, whether from Taobao or AliExpress, and then they just trying it out for fun. Um, initially, it's very fun. Everything is uh, working great. 
But uh, I've known of some of them, they use it for three months, for six months, and then things start breaking yeah. down. And, and they, right. they don't know, they, they, can't, they can't fix the system, they don't know how, and then they, they yeah. trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We, also so, have this issue. we also have this issue. So when things are not working, when they purchase things online, and then when things are not working, and when they look for us, then we are like, so what can we do for you? <laughs> yeah, great, great. It becomes a, a very challenging thing, you know, because, yeah, we are not, mm, we are not selling those products too. So we don't really understand why it acts in certain ways, you know, why it acts like that. Yeah. And, and then, you know, homeowners, they, they actually did try contacting their supplier and yeah. a, a lot of them, they, they MIA after they sell you the product. Yeah. So that's a big concern. Correct. Yeah. They are just distributing. They don't have that support network. La. So I think that's the issue with buying online. Although Correct. it's very cheap and it's like a couple of dollars and very low investment. Yeah. yeah. So thanks so much uh, for sharing and being with us today. And thank you also for our audience for tuning in to listen more about smart home. So I, 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 this is really enlightening. Uh, I think a lot of people in Singapore don't really know about Zigbee. Uh, Wi-Fi maybe because they see it in a lot of shops, uh, computer shops, they see it uh, online, uh, but yeah. not much about Zigbee and about all these uh, features that um, that's quite interesting. And mm. so if let's say they actually want to do a demo, uh, they want to have like a smart home tour, is there something that can be arranged with you guys? Yeah, sure. So... Uh, okay. Yeah, so our show house is actually at uh, 46 Taman Wana. Okay, it's five minutes walk away from Holland Village MRT. So when you come to our show house, you will really uh, get to experience uh, the full experience. You, you get to have the full experience uh, from the living room to the different bedrooms. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, so, so if you are interested, you can schedule an appointment with us. Uh, we are open Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m and on Saturday 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And at this point in time, it's by appointment only. Yeah, so do take note of the numbers. Yeah, so uh, if you have any, uh, if you are interested to, to have a smart home transformation, you can always reach out to us. I'm okay. more than happy to advise. Great, so once again, this is Eric from Cobble. K-O-B-L-E. So they do have a website. You can check them out as well. Uh, and thank you everyone for tuning in. Thanks Eric for your time today. And yeah, so we will end the interview. Thank you so much, yeah. Sorry? That... Yeah, thanks. thanks. Okay, thanks, thanks Eric. Jimmy. Okay, yeah. bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.